Well, thank you very much, everybody. We appreciate it. We're getting ready to go back. We had a tremendous uh, 24 hours. We've had a tremendous three months, actually, because this has been going on for quite a while. Uh, that was a tape that we gave to Chairman Kim and his uh, people, his representatives, and uh, it captures a lot, captures what could be done. And that's a great, a great place, has the potential to be an incredible place between South Korea, if you think about it, and China. That's uh, got tremendous potential, and I think he understands that, and he wants to do what's right. Uh, it's my honor today to address the people of the world following this very historic summit with Chairman Kim Jong-un of North Korea. We spent very intensive hours together, and I think most of you have gotten the signed document, or you will very shortly very comprehensive. It's going to happen. I stand before you as an emissary of the American people to deliver a message of hope and vision and a message of peace. Let me begin by thanking our incredible hosts in Singapore, especially Prime Minister Lee, friend of mine. This is a country of profound grace and beauty, and we send our warmest wishes to every citizen of Singapore who really made this visit so important and so pleasant, despite all of the work and all of the long hours. I also want to thank President Moon of South Korea. He's working hard. In fact, I'll be speaking to him right after we're finished. Prime Minister Abe of Japan, friend of mine, just left our country. And he wants what's right for Japan and for the world. He's a good man and a very special person, President Xi of China, who has really closed up that border, maybe a little bit less so over the last couple of months, but that's okay. But he really has, and he's a terrific person and a friend of mine and a, uh, really a great leader of his people. I want to thank them for their efforts to help us get to this very historic day. Most importantly, I want to thank Chairman Kim for taking the first bold step toward a bright new future for his people. Our unprecedented meeting, the first between an American president and a leader of North Korea, proves that real change is indeed possible. My meeting with Chairman Kim was honest, direct, and productive. We got to know each other well in a very confined period of time under very strong, strong circumstance. We're prepared to start a new history, and we're ready to write a new chapter between our nations. Nearly 70 years ago, think of that, 70 years ago, an extremely bloody conflict ravaged the Korean Peninsula. Countless people died in the conflict, including tens of thousands of brave Americans. Yet while the armistice was agreed to, the war never ended to this day, never ended. But now we can all have hope that it will soon end, and it will, it will soon end. The past does not have to define the future. Yesterday's conflict does not have to be tomorrow's war. And as history has proven over and over again, adversaries can indeed become friends. We can honor the sacrifice of our forefathers by replacing the horrors of battle with the blessings of peace. And that's what we're doing, and that's what we have done. There is no limit to what North Korea can achieve when it gives up its nuclear weapons and embraces commerce and engagement with the rest of the world that really wants to engage. Chairman Kim has before him an opportunity like no other to be remembered as the leader who ushered in a glorious new era of security and prosperity for his people. Chairman Kim and I just signed a joint statement in which he reaffirmed his unwavering commitment to complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. We also agreed to vigorous negotiations to implement the agreement as soon as possible. And he wants to do that. This isn't the past. 
This isn't another administration that never got it started and therefore never got it done. Chairman Kim has told me that North Korea is already destroying a major missile engine testing site. That's not in your signed document. We agreed to that after the agreement was signed. That's a big thing for the missiles that they were testing. The site is going to be destroyed very soon. Today is the beginning of an arduous process. Our eyes are wide open, but peace is always worth the effort, especially in this case. This should have been done years ago. They should have been resolved a long time ago. But we're resolving it now. Chairman Kim has the chance to seize an incredible future for his people. Anyone can make war, but only the most courageous can make peace. The current state of affairs cannot endure forever. The people of Korea, North and South, are profoundly talented, industrious, and gifted. These are truly gifted people. They share the same heritage, language, customs, culture, and destiny. But to realize their amazing destiny, to reunite their national family, the menace of nuclear weapons will now be removed. In the meantime, the sanctions will remain in effect. We dream of a future where all Koreans can live together in harmony, where families are reunited and hopes are reborn, and where the light of peace chases away the darkness of war. This bright future is within, and this is what's happening. It is right there. It's within our reach. It's going to be there. It's going to happen. People thought this could never take place. It is now taking place. It's a very great day. It's a very great moment in the history of the world. And Chairman Kim is on his way back to North Korea. And I know for a fact, as soon as he arrives, he's going to start a process that's going to make a lot of people very happy and very safe. So it's an honor to be with everybody today. The media, it's a big gathering of media, I will say. Makes me feel very uncomfortable. <laughs> but it is what it is. People understand that this is something very important to all of us, including yourselves and your families. So thank you very much for being here. We'll take some questions.